as you can see I've gotten the drive belts off and they're not very pretty I think this is the worst that was the one uh, that were furthest in in the machine and uh, I don't even know how this machine ran it's it's just so torn that I can't even imagine how it ran so what I did was I got some new belts I hope these will fit they are 835 millimeters by 17 millimeters uh, the number of them are B31 so uh, I got lucky I had uh, I, I went to a, a place uh, in Malmö and they happened to have three of those uh, laying on a shelf and uh, so I just I bought them and I'm going to replace all three so these are the three um, <clears throat> the three belts leading from the gearbox to the spindle and then there's two belts further down from the uh, from the motor up to the gearbox so but those those seem to be fine so uh, these are the ones that need to be be changed Belts installed, it wasn't easy but uh, they're in place now, so hopefully it's going to work even better. I didn't notice that uh, the belts were that worn uh, when I test ran it earlier, but uh, hopefully it's going to work even better now. Hey YouTube, welcome back. So. Uh, this I think will be the fifth episode of uh, the restoration of the mill and uh, it's been taking some times uh, some time and uh, the reason for this is that I've been having some problems with the mill and I've also started a build here on my house so uh, I haven't gotten uh, all the hours in on the mill so uh, it's been been going pretty slowly lately um, and it's gonna keep going pretty slowly for a while more but uh, but it is coming together and I've managed to solve those problems that I had and basically what those problems were were um, electric because when I'd uh, put the mill back together and I was going to test run it I blew out all the fuses in the mill and in my garage and even in my house so uh, it took me some time to find out what the problem was and uh, the problem actually was that the cable for the incoming power on the mill was uh, had been rubbing against the, the drive belts and when I I think that when I changed the drive belts I've ex I've um, managed to uh, to disrupt that that uh, uh, damage in the cable so immediately immediately when I when I flick the switch on it just blew everything out and probably what it did uh, right then was that it damaged this uh, motor protector and relay so when I fixed the problem with the uh, the damage on the cable then I just couldn't get the the machine to start up again and uh, it actually actually ended with me having to uh, take that uh, motor protector off and just go online and uh, find me some some uh, newer things so I bought this uh, LC1 motor protector with a relay and uh, now everything's working good. I have swapped out basically all the wiring on the milling machine. Uh, I have here, these are the old fuses 
uh, that's on the other side of the mill and uh, these are old uh, porcelain fuses and I just didn't care for those so I uh, I swapped out all the fuses for modern uh, modern ones instead so basically all the electrics are new the only thing on the mill uh, electrical wise that are not new are the cables going to the the front switch and the cables going to the motor and the reason that I didn't uh, swap out the motor cables is that if I if I was going to do that I'd have to take the motor out of the machine and that's uh, just a job I don't have time for right now so but now everything is working I've had the mill running so uh, so I know it's it's uh, good to go again um, and the other problem I was having was that when I filled oil to the the spindle because I changed the oil in the gearbox and the spindle and there was basically no oil in the spindle and no oil in the gearbox so when I filled the oil for the the spindle I filled it up to halfway on the looking glass here and when I did it just started pouring oil out of the spindle so it took me some time to realize that uh, I, I first thought that the seals uh, on the spindle was was worn so I started taking everything off and uh, what I realized later was that it was probably not supposed to be in the middle because when the when the oils uh, when the oil had run out of the spindle and was down at maybe one fourth or uh, or one third of the looking glass, it it stopped running, and uh, it still lubricates the the bearings in the spindle very good. So there's no problem there, but it's just not pouring out of the spindle. So that's probably a more suitable uh, level for the oil. So uh, those problems are fixed now uh, and as I said that's the reason it's been taking some time. Uh, but now the machine is up and running. Uh, I still have some, some small things to do with it. Uh, <coughs> I need to fix this. Uh, this is the, the arm or the, the shaft for the feed. And uh, for some reason, this can disconnect from the axle on the that's going to the table, and I don't think it's supposed to do that. So I'm gonna have to have a look at uh, how to fix that problem. Um, this uh, this one was really really worn, and you couldn't see what what was on there. So what I did was I sprayed it with some black paint. And then I uh, these these all the letters and everything are leveled. So uh, what I did was after I spray, sprayed it with some paint, I just took some uh, wet sandpaper, really fine wet sandpaper, and I just rubbed it until everything got visible again. So I think it's looking looking pretty good now. You can see uh, all the the speeds and feeds. So uh, that's good. It's supposed to go down here so I'm just gonna get some rivets to fasten that again um, so I think that's basically the the things I need to do with the milling machine now in order to have it uh, have it uh, fully complete again and the only reason that we can't test it today and make some test cuts is that the the tool I have no tooling for it and the tooling I've ordered hasn't come yet so uh, we're just gonna have to you're, you're gonna have to um, have to uh, just uh, be satisfied with with a small uh, test run uh, so you can see that the machine is running and uh, in the next episode we'll probably make some some test cuts. I hope so anyways. 
So I'm gonna take you over to the other side and just show you the lamp I bought and installed. So uh, this is where those uh, fuses are that I was talking about, which I've swapped out for newer ones. And uh, there's this outlet to plug in a lamp. And uh, so what I did was I went to IKEA and I bought this, uh, this desk lamp so we can get some good lighting on, uh, on our workpiece when we start machining on, on this. Um, so that's, that's pretty, pretty handy to have. It makes a, a big difference when, uh, when we're gonna start machining. And that's where the, I don't know if you can see that there. I'm just gonna lower the camera. And that's where the, the axle for the feed goes. So that's something I'm gonna have a look at. It's supposed to be like that. And uh, the problem is that when I lower the table uh, far enough, this actually drops out. The axle, axle disconnects from, from this one. And if that should happen when the machine is running, this is going to uh, probably going to be damaged because this is rotating and it would hit against the machine and probably break this off. So that's nothing uh, that I want, uh, want to risk. So I really need to fix that before I start using it. So what we're doing today is uh, cleaning these arbors up and uh, I'm gonna do that using electrolysis. So uh, I have some sodium carbonate uh, and uh, I'm not sure I have a container big enough to fit these. And in that case I will get one and I'll probably continue this tomorrow. But um, the first step is just getting all the rust off them and then I'll have to check, check all these uh, spacers um, so I know they're, uh, they're true and uh, in, a, in a good condition. So uh, I'm just gonna try and get a, a container and we'll, uh, we'll set it up and just uh, and then we'll just have to wait for it to to finish. I don't know how long it's gonna take, maybe a, a day or two, um, but it's gonna be interesting. I haven't done any electrolysis before, uh, not rust removal anyways. So it's gonna be a, a first for me and a, a good experience. Okay, so here's the setup. I have uh, my 12 volt charger here. Hope that's gonna work because that's all I have basically. Um, and I've con connected the uh, negative wire to these pipes here. Have an extra uh, wire there, and they go down to uh, to the arbors hanging here. And I I can't uh, since they are uh, so long. I can't fit all the arbors at once so I'm gonna have to do them three or maybe four at a time and, uh, and we have some uh, sacrifice steel here so uh, I'll just fill that up with water now and uh, put the, the uh, sodium carb carbonate in and then it's just a matter of waiting I hope If you want a tutorial of this, uh, I'm not the guy to give it. All I really did was copy uh, our teaching YouTube teaching guru, Mr. Pete. So uh, I really recommend his uh, his video on rust removal. He's got a lot of uh, know-how, and uh, and his videos are very informative. So uh, so check that out if you want to know exactly how to do this so um, <clears throat> we're gonna switch the power on and uh, we'll see how 
how uh, the ampage looks. Oh, it's not much. It's maybe one or two amps right now. So uh, I don't know if you can see that from there. I'm gonna try and move the camera a little bit because it's actually already starting to see if I can get a shot of this here. You see that down there how it's starting to make some bubbles and uh, those bubbles are the rust being removed. The chemical uh, reaction has already started so uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, to seeing how this uh, turns out. It's really interesting. So I'm going to check in again in uh, a couple of hours before I go to bed, and uh, and I think we're going to have to wait even longer. But hopefully, in a couple of hours, we'll see. Uh, what this, what the result uh, looks like. So about two hours in and uh, I've disconnected the power now and we'll just have a look at these. Looking cleaner, still some ways to go. But it is looking much better so uh, we're just gonna continue just gonna have a look here there you can see we're starting to see the bare metal and uh, well it is looking good so uh, I'll let it be overnight and uh, hopefully tomorrow we're gonna have a good result